everybody back for another episode so we had a couple of couple of week hiatus there been working on stuff but uh nothing really worth filming so let's take a look at a uh, quick look at what i've been doing and what we're going to do on the truck next no you're not bringing home another piece of junk <laughs> Okay, so this is what I have been doing. Stripping the old van down. Got everything out of it I want. Good old running small block, we're keeping that. Got the windshield, that's going in here. And then, uh, I mean, just all kinds of stuff on this thing. We're just pulled the whole wiring harness out of it there. So we're gonna be trimming that up to, uh, to make it work in the truck. And, uh, So, also got up in my storage loft up there and purged and just got all kinds of junk. You know, there's so much stuff you accumulate from projects over the years. And and I thought, man, this, some of this stuff's been sitting around here for a decade and I'm never going to use it. So, we're biting the bullet and we're throwing a bunch of it away. So, uh, that's my storage loft up there. So, a bunch of stuff has been removed up there. I just left uh, a couple of items I may someday use, but uh, definitely took a lot of weight off of that thing. So on this, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the transmission in this thing, in this episode. And also, the radiator came in, so we are gonna get this mounted. It's gonna go right, right about there. So we're gonna make a mount for that. Uh, I'm going to go electric fan on this one, so uh, we'll get the fan put on it. And uh, so that's where I would like to get uh, by the end of this uh, video is transmission in and radiator figured out and mounted. And so I've got two ways to go on a cross member for transmission here. I've got this uh, universal guy here which we may end up using that, or I cut that section out of the frame of the van when we shortened it. So there's the mounting uh, uh, cross member for the transmission cross member, which is right there. So we may end up cutting these frame rails back off and putting that in there and putting this cross member back in there. Not sure which way we're gonna go yet, that's why it's sitting here and I didn't throw it all away. So anyway, that's what's going on. Uh, good to have another video going again. And uh, let's get to it. Okay, so we did a major cleanup. I got the van full of scrap metal sitting out there waiting for somebody to pick it up. I got a few people say they want it. We'll see who actually shows up for it. Um, so I've got... Uh, this cross member out, like I said, I, I don't know if I'm gonna use this or if I'm gonna use this uh, this universal guy. One of the two. So we'll see how that works out. Um, got the transmission on my new jack. Um, I did go back and put in, there was that sleeve on the tail shaft that I had took out, that internal sleeve that, um, I guess it's to help uh, seal the drive shaft. Somebody mentioned on previous video, you ought to leave that in there. So I did put that in there. I'll tell you what, I tried to put that seal retainer back on and I think the little nibs of it just wore out because you put it on and you do it with just barely any um, effort. You can just pull the thing off. So, so many transmissions I put together do not have that seal retainer. Uh, Chevy one so and I'm confident that seals not going anywhere. It's we're just gonna put it together like that All right, so what I need to do is uh, get the converter snap it into place and I'm gonna have to jack this thing way up To get that to slide under there But uh, yeah, kind of excited about using a new jack. I think it's gonna be cool uh, Probably one of those things I'll use 
once a year and then just keep moving around to get out of my way, but that's okay. Um, okay, let me get the converter in there. Uh, we'll get this jacked up, see if we can get this slid under there, and uh, which I hope we can, because I'm picking that transmission up underneath uh, the truck would really not be fun at all. This, this is the kind of the time I sort of wish I had a lift, but but I'm not there yet, so. But uh, okay, let me get this under there and we'll see what we got. Okay, that worked. We got her jacked way up. Got her slid under there. Let's let it down. And make sure we don't crush the transmission when it comes down. Slowly, baby. Okay. Yeah. That worked. All right. Okay, what we're gonna do is slide that thing up and line her up and throw a couple of bolts in it. Oh yeah. I like that transmission jack. That's nice. Okay, so let's uh set the camera anywhere while I'm doing there or not. Let me get let me just go ahead and get it on there and uh then we'll pick this back up. Let's go back in just a second. Okay, so it's in there. Man, I should have bought one of these things years ago. That was like literally 10 minutes. Slide it under here, slide it right up to the thing and throw a couple of bolts in it. Uh that was nice. I, in the past, I've all just like balanced them on a floor jack. Actually, that height looks pretty good right there. We're going to have a, I don't want to get, I think you can see the rear end. I don't want to get too high above the rear end on the angle. I think that looks about right. One thing I like about this truck is there's lots of room under here. I only meant to jack it up to get under it. And I've talked about lowering it. And I know that would look pretty cool, but I'm just afraid that will uh, negatively affect its use as a truck as far as being able to, if I want to pull something with it, if I want to throw a heavy load in the back, I don't know if having it lowered is really something I want to do. So I think initially we'll just put it on the road at this stock ride height and then we'll figure it out. So cross member wise, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see that. So this cross member here is kind of in the way of that other one. If I wanted to put that one in, I'd have to cut this one out. I don't know if I want to do that or not. Let me get the other one see what it looks like. This one is for a, a, a two bolt. Uh, half mount. This is a single, but it gives us an idea anyway. So if we do that like that, oh, we got a lot of space to make up doing that. Yeah. Just not sure. Well, I think what I'm going to do. Got a bolt there I need to grind off. I think that's up in the bed. And there's a uh, heat shield there. I'm going to pull that off. I'll have to get this bolt out to do that. And then just cut that other, well, measure first, make sure it's going to fit. But I think we'll cut that other one and just see how it would look in here. It sure would be easier to put that other one up in here, weld it here, weld it here, throw the factory cross member piece in and be done with it. So let's do that and see what we got. All right, we'll be back in just a minute. 
Okay, so here's what we got. Um, the side of the factory mount was just uh, not a good option. Um, so we are going with this aftermarket mount. And uh, if you can see, it is too short to fit between the frame rails. And even if you put the, they give you these ends, even if you put these ends on, it's still too short to fit between the frame rails. So what I think I'm going to do is I've got either some, uh, I got some two by four tubing. We're going to make a cross member to go frame rail to frame rail, and that'll be a bolt in one. And then we'll come down off of that, maybe with a piece of plate down to here and an angle and then this will bolt to that I'm thinking or we could come down with a piece of plate with a hole cut in the center that will slide right over this and then we weld around there which maybe that would work better then we're not bolting too many things in Let's see if I got a hole saw that size, but that uh, that might work a little better. So I've got either. See. I've got either this piece of steel, which is uh, this is like architectural steel. This came from uh, came from some van I scrapped years ago. It was the uh, it held the back the back seat in. So that's uh, that stuff is pretty stout. We could we could make it with that, or we could make it with this two by four tubing. Either way, it's going to be plenty stout. So I'll figure out which way we're going to go. And basically, we're just going to take it, and I'm going to weld some plate on the ends that will stick out that far on each side, have a bolt hole on each side that way. We'll uh, temp it in with some uh, self-tappers, get everything in place, and then we'll drill the holes solid and we'll run some, uh, I don't know, maybe some 7 16 bolts all the way through there and through the frame to the other side. So uh, yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do. All right, so let me do a little thinking of how uh, we're going to do this. We've got lots of different kinds of steel around here. In fact, that's pretty stout. That might make good uh, plate to put on the ends to uh, for my uh, bolt holes. I may use that. That is actually an old uh, thing I made that goes on a hydraulic jack for a transmission. But now I got a transmission jack, so I can cut that thing up. Okay, let me uh, let's get this cut. Um, let's cut some pieces out of that. I need to put this in there and make sure that it's not going to interfere with the top of that transmission, which I guess if I have to, I can just move the thing up. And then I think I have enough plate. I got that piece. I think there's enough there that I could, and I got scraps over here, I can make a piece to come down off of that thing to, uh, to catch that, that cross member. Yep, the wheels are turning. Okay, let's uh, let's do some chopping and some welding and we'll see what we got. All right, so I got my uh, piece of two by three cut and uh, or two by four, no, it's two by three, I think. And uh, I decided to go ahead and use that instead of that other stuff. I don't know that, man, this stuff is really thick. I don't know how good my weld, my weld would probably burn it, but I'm gonna go with that. And then I've got this piece of steel. This is pretty stout. This is probably about the same wall thickness as that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drill my holes first because it's easier to drill holes when you're holding on to something big. And then we're going to cut this out. And then we're going to take these two plates and weld it on each end. And I think first I'm going to weld one on and try it and make sure I don't get too tight of a fit in there before I get the other one on so uh all right so let me uh drill these holes we'll cut this and we'll uh we'll do a little testy here 
All right, so I got that plate welded on that end. And uh, I put it up in there and tried it, and I think there is just enough room to weld the other plate on this end and have enough room to slip it up into between those frame rails. It's gonna be a little tight, but we'll uh, use a persuader and get it up there. I'd rather it be a little bit tight and kind of hold itself up in there than be loose and be falling out. So that way I know my holes will be good and flush on the uh, uh, side beams when we when we screw into the when we uh, yeah when we screw into this thing. All right, let me get this one welded on there, and I will slip it up in there and uh, see what we got. But uh, yeah, I'm liking it. Okay, so cross member is up in there. I got some uh, big heavy duty self tappers on it, uh, and that's just temporary. Like I said, once we get it all done. I'll just take one of those out at a time, drill. I think I'm probably gonna get a 3 8 grade eight bolt and just drill all the way through this frame rail. And uh, I'm gonna put some heavy fender washers on this side and we're just gonna make this thing where it bolts in. So what I'm gonna do here is I've got just enough of this square tubing, rectangle tubing left, that we're gonna come down with a piece like this just past here and I'm gonna drill a hole through both sides of it and we're just gonna slip it right up on there, weld it to that, and weld it around this. So that uh, cross member will all be one piece. So I thought about making it a bolt-in piece down here, but I think we'll just, I think we'll just weld the thing and I think that's gonna work good. So uh, let me get these pieces cut and uh, I'm gonna find a hole saw that is that size, pretty close to that size, I don't want a bunch of slop in it. And uh, we'll get the hole drilled through there and uh, see what we got. All right, so here's what we got. I took this piece of square tubing, drilled a hole through it, and you can see that cross member comes through there. So we'll weld it here, we'll weld it all the way around there, we'll weld it on the back side, we may even put a a gusset plate up in there uh, but I think that's gonna that's gonna work fine so we're gonna get it all I'm gonna get this side tacked in make the other side get it tacked in um, and then I'm gonna pull this whole thing out and weld it while it's uh, welded on the bench and then drill them holes up there and I uh, will shoot a little paint on this thing too so let me go ahead and uh, let me get this side tacked in, get the other piece made, get it tacked in, and then uh, we'll pull this thing out and, and see what it looks like. But I, I think this is going to work pretty good. So, all right, back in view. All right, here's the other side. So we got uh, each side tacked in. Now we're going to go ahead and pull this thing out of there and uh, uh, finish weld this thing up, add a gusset to it. But uh, I think that's gonna work pretty good. It's, that's pretty stout, so. All right, uh, let me get this thing out of here. We'll throw it on the bench and we'll, uh, we'll take a look. Okay, so here's what we got. Uh, I think this is gonna work good, it's good and stout. I cut a couple pieces of scrap quarter in it and we're just gonna Make a little gusset right there in the corner on both sides. Um, so I'm going to weld these all the way around here, around there, around the tubes on both sides. And uh, like I said, weld those guys in. I hope I got enough wire left. Uh, looks like it's running a little low, but we'll see. So let me uh, get this thing ready and we'll, we'll get to burning some.
All right, not the prettiest welds, but it is stuck together good. Um, man, that thing is hot. So uh, we're gonna let that thing cool down for a while, then I'm gonna wire brush all them welds off and uh, shoot a coat of paint on that thing. So it'll probably be, probably won't go back in today. Probably go back in, excuse me, uh, tomorrow or a little later in the week. So anyway, that's done. All I gotta do is drill my holes on the frame, slide the bolts through, and we are good there. So what I wanna do now is um, address this radiator situation. Um, Hang on, let me move the stand over here and we'll take a look at what we got. Okay, so next order of business is we want to get this uh, radiator in here. And uh, bought an aluminum radiator and a electric fan. Let's see if I can get in here. Oops, I forgot something I need a new marker. But I think we're gonna have to do like mount a notch this cross member up a little bit to get this as low as I want to. Okay. All right, so um, I need to know how thick that fan is. Take cardboard off. Widest radiator I can get in here. 24. Which, if I remember correctly, on the old box vans, they were not this wide. It was a little, little skinny top tank radiator. So, I want to go there, and I'll tell you, I thought I was going to have to notch it, but truthfully, that looks pretty good. So here's my upper radiator hose. I'm gonna swap this to a uh, side takeoff hose like this. I don't know if I like the angle of that one or not. I'll have to see what else I got. I kind of rather have one that goes, you know, turns out this way instead of having to come in and go down in the top because if I, the more I go up here, the more taller I got to make the doghouse, and I don't want to make the doghouse real tall. So uh, maybe the one off the maybe the one off the other engine will work good, or I might have to see if I can just find a ninety degree one, which I'm sure I can. So this is good. I, I don't think we'll have to notch this. So let's see what we got. I tried to get a name brand cooling fan. I really like mechanical fans better, but I just thought I'd, let's go ahead and go with the power fan on this one. So if I got this one, let's come up quite a bit. So this would have to be about right there. That'll give me just enough room. All right, so where does that put me? Yeah, I can live with that. So I need to make a bracket or something to hold the bottom of this thing. Right there. And I'm kind of thinking that big heavy duty channel we were looking at to put back there, that this radiator may fit right down into that thing. If that's the case, we just cut a piece and tack it onto there and put some rubber down in there. Um, probably need to make a sheet metal piece here to 
so I don't want all the air go. I don't want a bunch of air going under the radiator. I want the air to be forced up in the radiator. And then up here, we're gonna make a. Uh, now you can't just, now you can see it on the frame rail there. We're gonna make a pan, a sheet metal pan, that kind of covers this, and the air coming in the grill will be forced up through that pan up into the radiator. So. I don't want all my air bypassing the radiator. Which is how they did it on, uh, what's the last van I had like that? I had a Dodge A100, you see that blue one in my uh, uh, video intro, uh, that had that paint on it. And I'll tell you what, if you didn't have that paint in place, that thing would get hot. Okay, so let me, uh, let's pull this out. And I'm gonna see if I got, see if that piece of channel will work. Stay there, baby. And if it will, we're gonna cut a piece and uh, put it in there. And I might as well go ahead and zip tie this fan to the radiator. So we're setting it in as well as simple. So, all right, let me get that done and we'll uh, be right back. All right, so the channel did not work. It's not wide enough. So what we did was um, I cut this piece of angle and we're gonna take these little pieces and we're gonna weld these guys onto there. And that will give me a channel for these tanks to sit down in. And then I've got some, uh, some scrap rubber roofing, some EDPM roofing. Uh, from an old job save some of that so we'll cut some strips of that and we'll kind of lay that in that channel to cushion that uh, and we'll glue it in there to cushion that uh, those tanks um, so I think that will work okay let's go ahead and uh, let's get this set up and get these welded on there and I need to mark where they go and then we'll see what it looks like all right so fan is on we got the cyclone and then uh, got this welded up and I'm happier with my welds on this. And then this guy is going to go. And so we're going to weld this to the frame and this will sit right down in there like that. It's a nice little rubber cushion. Got a little play in there. Put a little rubber cushion in there to keep that from uh, hurting anything. So let's go ahead and uh, figure out where this is going to go in the frame. We'll get it tacked in there, and then we're going to figure out. Uh, I need to kind of start figuring out the shape of the uh, um, shape of the doghouse a little bit, because I got to I got to figure out the upper mount. Well, the upper mount will be the so the top of the radiator will be the takeoff point where we angle down because we're gonna we're, radiator's gonna come here doghouse gonna come across here and then it's gonna angle down that way air will come in here up through the angle across the radiator um, okay so let's get let me get that thing set in there uh, make sure the radiator is where I want it we'll go ahead and uh, tack it in there and then we'll look at what we're gonna do on these upper mounts to make that radiator solid. So just about there, let's take a look. All right, so that is how that's gonna go. So we're gonna tack those ends down and then we're gonna make a piece. Let's see, we got this gap under here. I'm just gonna bend a piece of sheet metal to fill that gap so that we're not pushing air. When the air is getting pushed up here, it's not going under the radiator that's it's going up through the radiator so all right i think that's looking pretty good let me go ahead and uh let me get this guy tacked in and let's uh clean this up and uh cut a piece of sheet metal for that i don't think i gotta fully weld that in i think if we just put that in there and tack that in we'll do a bunch of tacks on top and the bottom i think we'll be okay so uh let me do that and then i'll take another look here Okay, so we got that filler piece tacked in there, and uh, let me let that cool off a little bit, and I'm going to cut me some uh, some rubber pieces for in there, and we'll, um, yeah, I might shoot a little paint on that thing first, 
and then uh, put some glue in there and glue them rubber pieces on and we'll get that set down in there and then we can take a look at uh, what we want to do for an upper mount but I think that's going to sit in there pretty good is it yeah, it's still too hot I don't want to set that radiator on it yet so let me uh let's get that done and then we'll take another look here okay the lower mount is done I got a little bit of rubber glued in there <clears throat> and let's start with this good got plenty of room for my pulley back there okay let's take a look from the outside here oh yeah sit forward a little bit and tilt her back a little but uh yeah i like that so i think what we're going to do for a front mount is we're going to come up with some square tubing go across and back down and that will support the front of that <clears throat> and it will give us our um, like front hoop for where the the uh, doghouse is gonna go it's gonna come up here like I said and it's gonna angle down that way and then that'll give me some, we'll probably angle down to you can see where that cut in the floor is over there. Angle down to there. And then that'll give me this much more floor space up front. Which, yeah, that's, a, that's about what the the old flat front vans had. So, uh, let me take a few measurements, cut a few pieces for this, and we'll get it tacked in. And uh, see what we got. Okay, so there we go. Um, I got a little play in here like this. I'm thinking, see I got that lip there. I could probably run a couple of self tappers through that little lip of aluminum into this. And that'll hold that steady. And I got my piece of rubber right there that's gonna, that's gonna support that. And uh, yeah, I like it. So the sides I'm gonna make to bolt on. So you can take those on and off. Um, uh, for for being able to pull the engine easier. So right now, if, if this was all welded solid and we pulled the radiator out and we were able to pull the sides off and pull the top off, then we could easily get our motor out there. So that's going to be the that's going to be the idea. Uh, not like I'm hoping I ever have to pull the motor on this thing again. So, <laughs> but we uh, don't want to weld the whole thing together to where it can never be taken apart. So anyway, uh, that came out good. So we. Uh, I got a couple coats of paint on this thing, so we're letting it dry. It's probably going to be tomorrow before I uh, before I go ahead and put that back in there. But uh, yeah, we got a lot accomplished. Trans is mounted, uh, radiator is mounted. I have got a new ATI distributor came in for this thing with the wires and all that. Uh, got a EB, EB, eBay Chinesium carburetor coming for it, and. Uh, we're not too darn far from being able to fire this thing. So what I'm going to do this week is um, I'm going to get that trans cross member in tomorrow and I'm going to measure for the drive shaft and I'm going to drop it off to get the drive shaft made for it. And then I want to change the filter on the trans uh, so I can put fresh fluid in it. And I can't really start it without a drive shaft in it. So I want to get that stuff done and then we can kind of start putting all this stuff together up here. And uh, yeah, once the uh, once you, once the engine is running, we're we're on the assembly train here. So anyway, uh, appreciate everybody following along today, and that's uh, going to be it for this video. 
and we will do a uh, get a word from the Lord before we close up and uh, that'll be it for this one so we'll catch you on the next one Hey everybody, thanks for coming along on the video today. So we got uh, got a pretty good amount of stuff done out there and uh, happy with that. Uh, so uh, for the message today, um, I was reading um, in my, my uh, apologetics Bible, uh, I came across this article by James Parker about uh, could God um, be fully man and fully God? And that there has been some uh, discussion about that, you know, over the centuries. Uh, some more liberal theologians say that, uh, you know, that's that's contradictory. God can't be fully human and fully God. Um, so we'll, I'll just kind of paraphrase what's in this article because it's 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 pretty deep. But I uh, once I got through it, I, I really got a lot out of it. And it may be a question that. Uh, non-believers or, uh, you know, uh, some Christians may have that we might want to answer for them. Um, so historically, Bible-based Bible theology argues that God is omniscient, all-knowing, omnipotent, all-powerful, sinless, and incorporeal, incorporeal, that's right, without a body, and that these attributes are essential and necessary to deity. Characteristic, characteristically, human beings do not exhibit these attributes. So how can Jesus simultaneously be fully divine and fully human? So along these lines, people have attacked the doctrine of the incarnation, claiming that it is illogical and contradictory, but it's not. So the alleged logical contradiction is based on a fundamental misunderstanding of how human nature is defined. According to Thomas Morris, in his book, The Logic of God Incarnate. Haven't read that book? I might check that out. Morris has argued that the way out of this apparent impasse is to have a clear understanding of three important concepts. Concept one, essential versus non-essential properties. Concept two, essential versus common properties. And three, the difference between being fully and being merely human. On the first issue, Morse argues that an essential property is a property that, if removed, fundamentally changes the thing in question. So if God's attributes of omnipotence, omniscience, etc. were removed, he would no longer be a deity. These are essential tributes, uh, attributes. While it is a common attribute for a human being to have two hands, it's not an essential uh attribute to have two hands. And I lost my place there. Okay, so it's it's not an essential problem, uh, property to humanness. You can still be human and not have two hands. The heart of the attack on the incarnation comes from critics on the basis that lack of omniscience, omnipotence, etc. is essential to humanness since human beings do not have these qualities. This brings us to Morris's second distinction. Essential versus common properties. It's a common property that everyone living on planet Earth was born on planet Earth. But this is simply a common property. It's not an essential to be human. So um, in this day and age, you could be born on a space station. Maybe a few years down the road, you might be born on a base station on the moon or on Mars, you would still be human. You wouldn't be born on Earth, but um, so being born on Earth is not essential for you to be a human. So Morris then asked the question, on what basis does one know that the absence of the attributes of omniscience and so forth are essential human properties and not just common properties? Last, Morris argues an individual is fully human in any case that individual has all essential human properties, all the properties composing basic human nature. All An individual is merely human if he or she has all those properties plus some additional limiting properties as well. Properties such as the lack of omnipot um, omnipotence, um, the lacking of omniscience, and so on. So Orthodox Christians in affirming the Incarnation are claiming that Jesus was fully human without being merely human. 
Uh, Ronald Nash is another guy that's in this argument, and he summarizes the implications of the argument as follows. This means two things. Jesus possesses all the properties that are essential to being a human being, and Jesus possesses all the properties that are essential to being deity. The historic understanding of the incarnation expresses the beliefs that Jesus Christ is fully God, that is, he possesses all the essential properties of God, and that he's fully human. That is, he possesses all the essential properties of being a human being. None of those which turn out to be limiting properties, and Jesus Christ was not just merely human. That is, he did not possess any of the limiting properties that are complements of the, of the divine attributes. Excuse me, in the face of these distinctions, the alleged contradiction of the incarnation disappears. That's pretty deep, but... Um, um, I, I, I really enjoyed reading that, and it, it kind of helped me with that uh, question a little bit. So I uh, uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you uh, would like to check that out, I recommend getting you a apologetics study Bible. I've learned so much from this, um, and uh, that article, along with many other really good ones, are in there. So... Um, you know, and those are the things we need to be able to do to give a good defense of our faith because questions like that come up. So hope you like that message. Um, and let's have a word of prayer and we'll be done. Father, we uh, thank you for today. And I just uh, um, thank you for um, uh, the knowledge that you have allowed us to uh, allowed us to have and allowed us to find to uh um, to work with our faith, that we can uh, we can see the truth in our faith, that we can uh, teach others the truth of our faith, and that uh, we can give a good defense of uh, of our faith. And uh, we just ask that, um, uh, as you have given this knowledge to us, that we that we use it wisely, uh, that we use it in a in a kind and loving way, um, and that. Um, you just use us for your, for your purpose to spread your word and to uh, to further the gospel, and we ask this in the precious name of your Son Jesus. Amen. All right, hit like, hit subscribe, um, leave a comment, and um, I will catch you on the next one.